Okay, so in the last tutorial, we looked at how powerful Ableton's overdrive effect is. And we looked at shaping our sounds so they either cut right through the mix or they sit better and gel with the other sounds in our track. Now, if you haven't watched that video, I recommend going back now and making sure you check it out because I go through all of the parameters and how to quickly dial in the results you want with overdrive. So assuming you've already got that one under your belt let's dive into this tutorial where we're gonna look at how to spice up a lead sound using a combination of overdrive and delays so here's our music example and you can hear we've got this wicked lead melody sound And we're going to be sending this to a return track. So let's look at the setup on the return. Get yourself a spare return and load up Overdrive and Ableton's delay. So in the last tutorial, I showed how to dial in your settings. So I won't go into detail on this, but I'm going to point out a few things that I've done. First up, we've got the pre-filter only working on the high mids, and I've done exactly the same with the delay as well, so it's not delaying anything that's happening in the low mids. And the reason for that is often lots of delays in the low mids muddy up your track. So you're gonna to wanna to dial this into taste, but I wanted to focus on the high mid, get the crunchiness there, and not interfere too much with the other sounds I've got going on elsewhere in the frequency spectrum. The delay itself, very simple, ping pong to give us some width, bit of feedback on there, 56%. Both of these effects are set to 100% wet, so we're only getting the effect signal. And then the big deal is, of course, how much drive and tone we want. So let's have a listen to what happens if I ram the send all the way up. So this is maximum send. In fact, might be easier in this view for you to see. Maximum send is now going to the overdrive. So you use the combination of the drive and tone to dial it in the sound that you want. And the next step is just to turn down your return. Now I like to start with it at about minus six. So when I'm dialing in that timbre using the drive and tone controls, I don't get any super loud volume spikes coming out of it. But what this now means is I've got a volume and a tone that I'm happy with at maximum send. And then I can then throw this and mess about with it accordingly without ever ending up with something super loud that I don't want going on in my track. And that's it. We're now ready to play. Now, I personally like to jam things in just to get a feel for where I want the delay to be happening. And then I can always tidy it up afterwards. So it sounds something like this. And we end up getting some really nice tones and delays coming out. Then you can, of course, go in and adjust it. Or if you've just got a feel for it like I have, you might want to draw stuff in. So I got a feel that I kind of like this note, maybe not full. This one sounded pretty cool at full blast. Definitely like what was going on the end here and so on and so forth. And we could just experiment until we get the sort of tones that we want. So in context, here it is now with these extra delays. Very cool stuff. So there you have it, another simple technique for this wicked little overdrive device. 
If you enjoyed the tutorial, you want more of the same, then make sure you hit subscribe so you're always kept in the loop. And remember to grab yourself a copy of our completely free ebook 101 Ableton Tips for House and Techno Producers. It's got loads of resources in there, loads of tips, beautifully produced book. It's got loads of links to videos for you as well. There's a ton of cool stuff to get through. Finishmoremusic.com forward slash 101 ebook. So that's 101 ebook. The link is, of course, also under the video for you. All the best. Take care. Until next time, happy music making.